Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. My name is Manuel and today I want to share a quick update on the structure of my CubeSat. So we are back in Fusion 360, for the moment at least, because I plan to switch to FreeCAD in the not too distant future. And I think when we last talked about the structure, we basically left off here. We had the rails done and the EPS bay and these inserts that hold the batteries. Given this, the next thing I did was just get an idea of the size of the EPS PCB. This is basically the area we have at our disposal to design the EPS on. After this, the next larger thing was to design the panels that would go on the sides. And first and foremost, I started with the um, solar panels, so the photovoltaic panels, because these seem to be the you know, most important ones and also the solar cells would dictate basically how large they could be. The design I came up with is basically a one half unit high um, PCB with two solar cells on it. I think I talked about solar cell selection in a previous video, which I will link in the description or here as well. After this, the challenge was to figure out a way um, to connect the uh, EPS PCB and the side panels at a 90 degree angle. It seemed reasonable to me to just use a, you know, kind of standard 90 degree pin connector and matching receptacles on the EPS PCB. Let's maybe turn off the PV panels for a moment so we can see what's going on here. So this is the 90 degree pin connector and the pins would go into um, pin receptacles, I think those are these ones, yeah, on the EPS PCB. Now these receptacles are actually made to be press fit into a PCB, that's why they have this hexagonal shape on the head here. And I also intend to use them this way for uh, the connection to the batteries, which should be this one, yeah. So these eight receptacles are going to be press fit into the PCB as they are supposed to, whereas I would like to try to solder these into basically castellated holes on the edges. Um, I'm not 100% sold on this solution, mainly because it may turn out to be really finicky to assemble. Um, yeah, but it's, it's an effort to keep costs low and consolidate the bomb. We'll see how it turns out. A Nice thing about this solution, if we turn on the connector again, the panel connector, is that we kind of keep the possibility to shift the EPS up or down by 10 millimeters by just having two more sets of holes into which this uh, connector can be soldered. So if you need to shift the center of mass around of your, of your cube set, this is kind of an easy way to move the EPS bay around. And also if you want to move the center of mass around in a more extreme way, you can also um, move the EPS bay by a half unit, plus or minus 10 millimeters. So there's kind of a lot of flexibility built in to get the satellite into a decent balance. Uh, while we are here, let's maybe have a look at what else is going on on the EPS PCB. Um, we also have the endo 2 connectors that I have mentioned a number of times in other videos that I'm going to use to connect this, uh, the stack of PCBs above and below the EPS PCB. So these are SMD components that are soldered onto the EPS PCB. And if we turn off this part for a moment, we see that there is a slot to pass through the connecting um, PCB into this connector. Yeah, that's the idea here. Um, what else is going on on the EPS PCB? Um, I think we mentioned everything about the bolts, of course. There are four, four M3 bolts that are holding the PCB in place. And that's basically it. So these are the constraints, like the physical constraints around which I am designing the PCB at the moment. Now going back to the panels, the next challenge was how to connect a bunch of those edge to edge so that they are coplanar. Again, with using as little plastics as possible, with using as little volume as possible, while keeping cost low and 
the bomb short. Again, I am um, I'm not 100% on this solution, but what I came up with is using the same uh, pin receptacles. Oh, we're on the wrong side here. The same pin receptacles again soldered into slots on the PCB, but this time edgewise and uh, matching pins that should be visible here. Yeah, that's what I came up with. So I would solder the pins into one side and the receptacles into the other side and then stack them together during assembly. Yeah, I, I have mentioned it, but this is very experimental. I have no idea if this is going to work, but it would be a maybe a bit finicky, but kind of affordable solution. So of course, all of this needs to be held in place somehow. And this is something I have um, struggled with for a while. What I came up with is this kind of um, brace. Let's maybe look at this aluminum version first. This bit here has the same thickness as the distance between two adjacent um, side panels, which is also the thickness of the PCBs I'm going to use, which is 1.6 millimeters. So we can have a very sturdy um, aluminum bracket and an insulator made out of affordable um, PCB because we of course do not want to short out the individual pins. And this would basically hold the PCBs in place via the pins and then two screws. There's also another version made out of PEK. So this is uh, the same engineering plastic I tend to use for these um, EPS bay inserts. Uh, in this design, you wouldn't need the PCB insert. I think structurally it would work. Um, I'll have to see which one is more affordable. A neat side benefit of these brackets is that you could actually um, lay the cube set down on its side without worrying about um, getting the, the solar cells scratched up or anything. So if you have two of those per unit, then this wouldn't be much of a problem. Again, I only put in uh, two in here because this file is kind of my place where I just, you know, try to assemble different parts and see if everything fits uh, before continuing, continuing working on the individual parts. What I am still struggling with, to be honest, is figuring out the way then how to um, bolt this, this bracket down. So for the moment, I'm thinking of just having a nut plate, basically, that would um, fit into the slot here and just have two tapped holes here and here. As you may know, I'm not a big fan of tapped holes, but for the moment, it's the most simple and affordable design I could come up with. Um, and it's also simple enough for me to mill myself on my uh, Carbera CNC and give it a try. So yeah, that's everything for the panels for the moment. Actually, there are two more things worth mentioning concerning the panels. Um, in reality, we can't close up all four sides of the cube set just with uh, solar panels as much as you would like power-wise, but we may need open spaces where antennas can stick out or where a camera needs a clear field of view or just, you know, a place where we can pull the RBF tag. So that's why I also made a variant of the panel that just has a cutout in the center and another one, sorry, that was the wrong one, another one that is just a blank where you can design um, something else if, in case you want to use a panel for a different purpose. So I think that was everything I wanted to mention concerning the panels. Another thing that is still really quite speculative at the moment is the idea of having magnet workers built into the side panels. So this would look something like this with uh, just large PCBs on each side that have um, PCB coils on them. As you may have noticed, this is only a 14 position connector and there are two spare receptacles. And these would connect to the magnet workers um, just with a length of, you know, a pigtail wire basically. But still, this is only just a really uh, vague idea and a rough sketch. Um, I mainly put this in already to not forget that it may be there in the future um, while I design the rest of the cube set. 
Also, this is not something for the near future. I mean, for the next uh, high altitude balloon flight in June, I'm not going to use magnetronkers. So yeah, that's more like something to think about in the future. So this is all I have for today. I am going to update the repo with these new parts because all of this is free and open source and you will find the link in the description as always. In the next episode, we are going to talk about the layout for the EPS PCB, which has turned out to be a bit of a challenge, dare I say. But yeah, we'll talk about it in a few weeks. Until then, if you have any questions or ideas, please leave a comment because I always love hearing from you all. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.